Hi guys, over the last couple of weeks we've explored equivalence in order to compare and simplify fractions. As I've said before, understanding equivalence is the key to developing a deeper understanding of fractions. Understanding decimal fractions is no different. If we can make connections in our learning using our understanding of equivalence, we won't need to rely on memorising facts and processes that quite often we don't understand. Today, we're learning to convert fractions into their decimal equivalents. To begin with, let's get thinking. Can you write these numbers in the correct order from smallest to largest? 1.32, 0 0.3, 0 0.23, 3, 2.3 and 0 0.03. Discuss these with a partner, justify your thinking by giving reasons, and then share your thoughts with the rest of the class. Before we put those numbers in the correct order, we're going to have a think about our number system. We're going to write headings for the first four places in our number system. So you can see we've got thousands, hundreds, tens and ones. And we're going to use base 10 materials to help us visualise numbers. This is a one and we can write this like so. This is a ten and we can write this as 1 and then a 0, because we have 110 and no 1s. This is 100, and we can write this as 100, because we have 100, no 10s, and no 1s. This is 1000, and we write this as 1000, because we have 1000, no 100s, no 10s, and no 1s. Numbers are adjectives, they describe quantities. To give them meaning, we need to associate them with things. The number three in its own is pretty meaningless. If I said I have three, it doesn't really mean anything. But use it to describe things and we can make sense of it. I have three sweets. I have three children. I have three hours to get this lesson recorded. And so on. Let's use things to represent those numbers. Let's represent those numbers using chocolate. I can have one bar of chocolate one packet that contains 10 bars of chocolate, one small box that contains 10 packets, and one large box that contains 10 small boxes. I can use these to make any number of chocolate bars. So I could get 1,234 bars of chocolate using one large box, two small boxes, three packets, and four single bars. The fewest number of whole bars of chocolate that we can have is one. But can we get less than one bar of chocolate? Of course, the answer to that question is yes. We can split a chocolate bar into smaller parts. By splitting a chocolate bar into equal parts, we can create fractions. Split it into two equal parts and we've made halves. Split it into four equal parts and we've made quarters. Split it into five equal parts and we've made fifths and we can split it into 10 equal parts, and we've made tenths. Fractions are limitless. They allow us to split something up into any number of smaller parts. We can create thirds, sixths, sevenths, hundreds, thousandths, millionths, and beyond. It would just be really difficult to do that with a bar of chocolate. However, our number system isn't so good. Let's go back to our base 10 materials to consider why. Let's start with one. If we have 10 ones, we have a 10. 10 of those 10s and we have a 100. 10 of those 100s and we have a 1000. We're getting 10 times bigger each time and this would continue as we move up to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions and so on. And we can look at this in reverse. 10 times smaller than a 1000 is a 100. 10 times smaller than a 100 is a 10. 10 times smaller than 10 is 1. Our number system is called the decimal system because deci or deci means 10. This system is based on 10 because each digit is scaling up or down by 10 depending on which way we're going. So our number system restricts us to scaling up or down by 10 with each place. So let's consider continuing this and getting 10 times smaller again. What is 10 times smaller than 1? We know that if we split one whole bar of chocolate into 10 equal parts, we create tenths. So one tenth is 10 times smaller than one whole. 
we could think about cutting that one into 10 equal slices so that one of those would look like this. To write this using digits, we need to write one like this. However, on its own, that just looks like one whole. To show that it's one tenth, we need to use a decimal point. The decimal point has one job to do. It separates whole numbers from fractions. So we can write one tenth by showing we have zero ones and one tenth with the decimal point separating them. What would be 10 times smaller than a tenth? If we split a tenth into 10 equal parts, we create hundredths, because it would take 100 of them to make up one whole. We could think about cutting that tenth into 10 equal parts, and one of those hundredths would look like this, which we can write in digits as 0 0.01, because we have no ones, no tenths, and one of those hundredths. That decimal point is fixed there. It doesn't move, and it's always been there. We just don't need it when we're working with whole numbers. But each of these numbers could be written like this. So 1 could be written as 1.0. 10 could be written as 10.0. 100 could be written as 100.0. And 1000 could be written as 1000.0. But when we've got no fraction there, we don't need to write that decimal point because we don't have a fraction to show. You might find it useful to make those tenths and hundredths. Ideally, my tenths would be exactly 10 times smaller than a base 10 1. That would be pretty tricky to do because I can't cut a plastic 1. This method works pretty well and allows us to see the link between those whole numbers, those thousands, hundreds, tens and ones, and those fractions, those tenths and hundredths. Take a piece of card, line up a 10 block along the edge, Mark a line. You can repeat that if you want to make more tenths. Now mark out 10 equal squares using that 10 to guide you. And then cut those out. You have tenths. If you want to make hundredths, cut one of those tenths into 10 equal parts. Now these are tricky to cut, so I prefer to half them and then cut those halves into 5 equal parts. We've created hundredths. We can then use these resources to compare those decimal numbers that we started with. So to make 1.32, I need a 1, 3 tenths and 2 hundredths. To make 0 0.3, I've got no 1s and I need 3 tenths. To make 0 0.23, I've got no 1s again, I need 2 tenths and 3 of those hundredths. To make 3, I just need three of those ones. I don't need a decimal point because I've got no tenths and no hundredths. To make 2.3, I need two ones and three tenths. And to make 0 0.03, I've got no ones, I've got no tenths, but I need three of those hundredths. Now that we've represented those numbers visually, it's easy to put them in the correct order from smallest to largest. 0 0.03 is the smallest, so we can put that first. Then next comes 0 0.23 with those two tenths and three hundredths. Then we've got 0 0.3 with those three tenths. Next comes 1.32 because we've got one whole, three tenths and two hundredths. Then it's 2.3 because we've got two holes and three tenths. And finally, the largest number there is 3, because we've got 3 ones. It's time to get investigating with a partner. Lisa has been asked to represent each of the following using bar models, resources, and decimal notation. One whole and three tenths of a chocolate bar. Two and a half pizzas. Three and three fifths glasses of juice. Three quarters of a tank of fuel. And finally, a score of 17 out of 20 in a class test. So I'd like you to draw bars to represent each of these fractions. Can you use those base 10 materials to represent each of those numbers? And can you write them in decimal notation? So pause the video for 8 to 10 minutes, have a go at that with a partner, and then share your thoughts with the rest of the class. Let's discuss the first amount. We've got one whole and three tenths of a chocolate bar. We can draw bars to represent this. We've got one whole 
and we can create three tens by drawing a whole bar, splitting that into ten equal parts and identifying three of those. Now we can use the resources to represent that number. We need a one to represent the one whole and because that fraction is already in tenths, then we can use three of those tenths like so. So it's easy to write the decimal equivalent to this. We've got one whole and three tenths, so we can write 1.3. Let's have a look at that second amount of two and a half pizzas. I can begin by using bars to represent that. So you can see there I've got two holes and one half. But when it comes to converting this into decimals and using those resources, it's a little bit tricky. I know that I'm restricted to working with tenths and hundreds. Now, I don't have tenths or hundreds. I've got a half, but I can use my understanding of equivalence to change that half into five tenths. Now that I've got tenths, I can use the resources and write it as a decimal. So I can put out two ones and I can use five of those tenths to represent that half. Now that I've got tenths, I can write it as a decimal. So two and a half can be converted into two and five tenths and I can write that as 2.5. Let's look at the next amount. We've got three whole glasses of juice and three fifths of a glass of juice. I can draw bars to represent that, so there are my three holes, and I can create three fifths by splitting a whole bar into five parts and identifying three of those parts. Once again, we're dealing with a fraction that isn't tenths or hundredths, so it's a little bit trickier to write this as a decimal number and to use those resources. Once again, we're going to use our understanding of equivalence. Each of those fifths can be split into two equal parts to create tenths. So those three fifths are the same as six tenths. Now that I've done that, I can use those resources and write it as a decimal number. So three and three fifths can be converted into three and six tenths. We can use three ones and six tenths to make that number. And we can write that in decimal notation as 3.6. Let's have a look at that next amount. We've got three quarters of a tank of fuel. Now I can use a bar to represent my three quarters like so. You can see I've split the whole bar into four parts and I'm interested in three of those parts. But once again, we've got a fraction that isn't tenths or hundredths, so I'm going to have to convert it. So I'm going to have to use my understanding of equivalence. Now I could begin by thinking, can I create tenths using quarters? Now if I split quarters into two equal parts, I create eighths. And if I split them into three equal parts, I create twelfths. So I can't convert three quarters into an equivalent in tenths. So this time I'm going to have to use hundredths. I could split each of those quarters into 25 parts. I've got 100 parts that make up the whole, so I've created hundredths. And those three quarters are equivalent to 75 of those hundredths. Now when I'm drawing the bar, I don't need to split each of those quarters into 25 parts. I can just write it like this. I can use the resources to make 75 hundredths. However, rather than using 75 of those hundredths, I know that 10 hundredths make a tenth. So I can use 7 tenths and 5 hundredths. And I can write that as a decimal number as 0 0.75. Let's discuss the next problem. A score of 17 out of 20 in a class test. Once again, I can draw a bar to represent that. I've split the whole bar into 20 parts to make 20ths, and I've identified 17 of those 20ths. But once again, we're not working with tenths or hundredths. I could try to convert that into tenths again, but you can see I end up with half a tenth there, which isn't helping me. So instead, I'm going to have to convert this into hundredths again. I can split each of those 20ths into 5 equal parts. There are 100 parts overall, and those 17 20ths are equivalent to 85 of those hundredths. Once again, I can use the resources to represent that. There's my 85 hundredths, but again, 10 hundredths make a tenth, so I can use 8 tenths and 5 hundredths. And I can write that as a decimal number as 0.85. It's time to discuss our success criteria. How did we achieve success? What are the steps that we can go through in order to convert a fraction into a decimal fraction? So pause the video for a few minutes, discuss that with a partner, and then share your thoughts with the rest of the class. When converting a fraction into a decimal fraction, the first thing we can ask ourselves is, is the fraction type tenths or hundreds? 
So here we've got 7 tenths or 74 hundredths. So the answer to this question is yes. In that case, we can simply convert that fraction to decimal. 7 tenths can be written as 0 0.7, and 74 hundredths can be written as 0 0.74. But what if the answer to that question is no? Then we need to ask ourselves, can the fraction be converted to tenths? So here we've got one half. We've not got tenths or hundreds, but that half can be converted into five tenths. So here we've got one half and three fifths. We've not got tenths or hundreds, but both halves and fifths can be converted into tenths. So we can convert each into their equivalent using tenths. One half is the same as five tenths, three fifths is the same as six tenths, and now that we've done that, we can convert the fraction to decimal. 5 tenths is the same as 0 0.5 and 6 tenths is 0 0.6. But what if the fractions can't be converted into tenths? Well, in this case, can the fraction be converted into hundredths? Here we've got three quarters and we can convert quarters into hundredths. Three quarters is the same as 75 hundredths, so we can convert that fraction to decimal and we can write 0 0.75. But what if the answer to that is no? What if it can't be converted into hundredths? What if we're trying to convert a fraction like one third to decimal? Thirds can't be converted into tenths, but they can't be converted into hundredths either. So what do we do in this case? We're going to explore this in a future lesson. It's time to try that out. Can we apply that success criteria in order to represent each of the following fractions using bar models, base 10 resources, and decimal notation? As ever, I've got three different sets of values and I want you to choose the value that suits you best. So for the first question, I'm going to use the yellow fraction. The plane is two fifths of the way from Glasgow to New York. In the second question, I'm going to use the green fraction Homer has eaten 17 20 fifths of a box of chocolates. And for the third question, I'm going to use the red value. 22 out of 40 of the children on the train are girls. So draw bars to represent each of those as fractions. Use base 10 resources to make those values and write each of those fractions using decimals. If you finish that in the time, I want you to make up three decimal numbers for someone else to convert back into a fraction. So pause the video for 10 minutes or so and have a go at those. It's time to reflect on today's learning. So with a partner or as a class, I want you to discuss the following questions. What have you learned today? What did you find easy or difficult? Did you get stuck? What helped you when something got tricky? What do you need more help with? What is really making you think? And what are your next steps? The last thing I'm going to ask you to do today is, can we apply what we've learned? So as a class, I'd like you to discuss, analyze, and solve the following problem. Captain America drinks 2.67 liters of apple juice. Thor drinks two whole cartons and 13 twentieths of a carton of apple juice. Can you use equivalence to prove who drinks more apple juice? And once you've done that, how much apple juice did he drink altogether? Thanks for joining me again today. I hope you enjoyed that. As ever, you can contact me at scott.morrow at southairshire.gov.uk if you've got any questions or you'd like to share your solutions. And you can follow me on Twitter at scottmorrowse. Next week, we're going to continue looking at equivalence, only we're going to be focusing on percentage. I hope you can join me then.